Dado, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? What are you doing with this title? Are you dumb? What are you doing? You have it so good. Just make, just make the exotic guides and just shut up. Why are you doing this to yourself? Why? Why would you do this? I'm arrogant. I'm so arrogant. Now that Deepstone Crypt is being torn apart since contest is gone, I thought today would be a really good time to get myself into some trouble by talking about an issue that I have with the raids. So let's just get it out of the way right now. I think raids after contest day are too easy. We'll also talk about contest mode rating too in this video, uh, probably just Deepstone Crypt specifically. Quite a hot take after some recent events, I know. But, you know, let me, let me explain first, okay? Just need you to have an open mind here before you start rushing to the comments and call me a moron and an idiot and out of touch and whatever else you want to do. Okay? Just hear me out. I feel like, for the past few raids, at least the ones with contest, that Bungie has been building the raids specifically for the day one experience and less so for the non-day one experience. While the day one experience is very important overall, the day two through 365 experience should be accounted for as well. Translation into Datto speak will discuss how I believe both of these experiences should be a little more difficult going forward. And before we begin, let me just get one thing clear since I know I'm going to be asked. I don't care how many people cleared the raid day one. We had the highest participation of a day one raid ever. We had some of the highest clear rates ever. Good. I want people to participate. I want you to be successful. This is the best Destiny gets out of the year. New raid day. It's the best time to be a Destiny player. It's one of the best events in gaming, period. My issues are not with the fact that so many people clear the raid and that I want it to be harder because F you. My issue is that I think the raid should be a more difficult experience than it currently is given what I believe a raid is supposed to be. With that being said, let's get into it. The raid is split into two components, in my eyes, combat difficulty and mechanic difficulty. Mechanic difficulty is how difficult it is to actually do the non-combat parts of the raid. How hard is it to run a ball across a field and drop it in a thing? How hard is it to switch a buff, make callouts, stand on the plates at the right time, kill this enemy at this time? Things like that. Things that don't really involve your power level. Generally speaking, the difficulty of the raids tends to come from this, as most players get stronger and stronger over time, thus negating the combat difficulty the higher the level they are. Mechanical difficulty gets easier through experience, familiarity, and practice, and is otherwise not something that you can control with gear. Most of the time, I believe that when people say the raids are hard, they are referring to the execution of the mechanics in the raid. This is not something I think is much of a problem when it comes to the difficulty of a raid. I personally would always love to see harder mechanics, but when it comes to the overall player base, I think mechanics on average in raids are fine as is. And again, I'm assuming that if you struggle in the raid or it takes you a while, it's because of inexperience in a raid setting or inexperience with raid mechanics. Or maybe you're just way too low level, which can be fixed much easier in theory. Combat difficulty, on the other hand, is everything that is not a raid mechanic. How fast are you able to kill trash mobs? The boss? High priority targets? How fatiguing is combat? Things like that. On day one, while a significant portion of the difficulty comes from figuring out mechanics, another portion comes from the fact that you're 20 levels below all of your targets. You deal less damage, you take more damage, so just surviving is also a significant part of the process. As soon as contest goes away, players gain massive advantages to combat, provided that they're at the same level as the encounters. This is why raids tend to be absolutely demolished after day one. The combat difficulty is, dare I say, completely removed from the raid if you're at level. Yes, being under level still generates a good challenge, but having to ask people to manually lower their power by digging through old gear to equip, in my opinion, is not the best system. If you're a regular raider, you may not have really enjoyed the first encounter of Crown of Sorrow, or maybe the second encounter of Garden, despite them being pretty good day one experiences. Why? 
While these two encounters had very light mechanics and instead focused on combat endurance. These are endurance tests, combat tests, damage checks. They tested how well you can kill off enemies in a set amount of time and survive. And when you're lower level, this can prove to be very intense. But when you're at level, these fights are very boring because you're not having to endure anything at all. They are 99% combat focused, but the combat portion is boring because you're able to kill things really quickly as long as you have halfway decent weapons or a halfway decent build or are just paying attention. While raids should get easier with better loot and more experience, there should still be, in my opinion, some aspect of a challenge when it comes to combat. It shouldn't be a complete non-factor like it is today. As a result, for more experienced raiders, the combat experience suffers greatly due to the ease of killing enemies and also with regards to how bad trash mobs actually are. During the day one race, I had a situation where I was actively trying to die by standing in front of a bunch of vandals and for a while, all of them just stood there and did nothing. This is the kind of combat ease that I am talking about. I'm talking about the fact that most enemies have the combat intelligence of patrol mobs. Why are enemies in Gambit more of a threat than enemies in the raid? It just doesn't really make any sense to me. This is supposed to be the premier piece of content in the game, and I'm fighting EDZ patrol mobs. Even in my team's day one Deep Stone Crypt run, we mainly wiped as a result of total team wipe mechanics or learning the mechanics in general. I think we wiped maybe once due to the combat challenge in that people were just dying to enemies shooting at us and we didn't have enough reses. You know what was also a factor if it is just a small one? There's not a single sniper based enemy in the entirety of Deep Stone Crypt. Another piece of evidence that points to the experience potentially being easier is kill death ratios. Bungie recently put out some intel on total kills and total deaths of Last Wish, Garden, and Deep Stone Crypt for the launch and 10 days after the raid launch. While the KD ratios for Last Wish and Garden were about 10.5, Crypt was almost at 13. Now, obviously, there are a lot of factors that go into that. How many enemies are in each raid encounter? Number of people participating. So I'm not going to base my whole argument on this, but it is a little piece of my argument. As a quick side note, I will give some credit to the third encounter of Deep Stone Crypt, which is also an endurance test. Because the game throws so much stuff at you, and because almost everyone has a role in some way, it can keep you at least engaged, even if you're just mauling everything to death. Things are happening quickly, there's a lot of enemies spawning. In contrast to the two encounters that I just mentioned, which can have periods of very extended downtime. However, enemies in this arena die very easily as well, and don't really pose as much of a challenge either. Maybe my clip of me standing in front of a bunch of vandals was a fluke, but it certainly seems possible that the combat challenge of some of the enemies in that encounter are even weaker than usual. Now let's clarify. Alright, hold up. Am I looking for a minus 50 light experience in the raid at all times? No. Absolutely not. That is not what I really find fun about the raids. I don't want raids to turn into scout rifle, plink plonk, 27 shots to kill a dreg because I'm too scared to move fest 2020. Okay. What I would like to see though is having the combat portion of the raids actually be relevant again in some way. I would like to actually have to engage with that part of the raid for more than just 24 hours. For reference, I've written this video about six days after the raid launched, and in that time, the raid has been completely stomped. All bosses one cycled, multiple sections of the raid cleared with two people, and Slayer Rage soloed a boss. Within a week of contest being off. That's insane. Are those players skilled? Yes, absolutely. I'm not trying to take away from their accomplishments. It's insane what they're capable of doing. But I don't know if this should be happening in the first week. To those asking my thoughts on the day one experience, the contest experience. With regards to Deep Stone Crypt, I think this was the easiest contest mode raid that I have done when it comes to the combat portion of the Wait, 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 wait. Before we hit the comments, hang on. I have done every raid race on day one. I have done all three contest mode raid races. In Destiny 2, my teams have placed 20th or better. Of the three contest mode raids, this was the easiest one. That does not mean this raid race was easy. 
It means it was the easiest of the three that I have done. This is not to take away from those who struggled in the day one experience, especially if it was your first one. Perhaps your light was too low, maybe it was your first time and you didn't know what to expect, maybe you didn't have a good loadout ready, maybe your mods weren't set up well, maybe you got hung up on one of the weirdest day one boss experiences in Atrax. All I'm saying is that of the three that I've done, this is the easiest one with regards to combat. Even in contest mode, I did not really feel threatened by much in terms of combat unless I was just messing around or not paying attention. What was a threat was Atrax and how much damage you needed to put out, but I think that fight was an anomaly among day one encounters. It's not normally the second encounter that gets people hung up, and I encourage people who got stuck there to try for the next raid because it is on a very short list of fights that I thought was a bit overtuned and or potentially misleading as to what you actually had to do. I do like the concept of very short burst damage windows, but it just never felt like that's what you had to do during the day one experience. If Atrax isn't the anomaly that it is, I think we see thousands more teams clear the raid on day one to the point where it is the most clear day one experience by significant margins. It would have been a three to four hour clear for Worlds First, and I think it would have been among the easiest World First races that I've been a part of considering the circumstances, and that's with contest mode on. Things like Scourge of the Past and Wrath of the Machine took two hours to clear, and that was because people could be at level for the day one raid race. This would have only taken an hour or two more than those, 20 levels under. This is why I'm saying to not get too hung up on Atrax if you didn't clear the raid day one. Atrax felt buggy, even if it wasn't, it felt weird, it felt overtuned in some ways, and you should absolutely not be discouraged after the Atrax day one experience. It was an anomaly. I know I'm repeating myself a lot, I just really wanna be clear. I've done every single day one raid race, guys, every single one, okay, all of them. Even Riven, even Valkaor felt better than Atrax, despite both of them taking longer to kill than the entirety of the first completions of Deep Stone Crypt on day one. Because with those other bosses, my team eventually felt like we knew the fight and it came down to execution. With Atrax, we didn't feel like we knew the fight, especially with regards to the whole healing thing. And even after we beat it, we didn't even feel that comfortable with it. Okay, Datto, you effing elitist raid lord. Why was the day one raid so much easier than usual then? Well, besides the fact that trash mobs in the raid are pathetic, a lot of reasons. I don't think these things are bad, not all of them anyway, they just account for why things were easier. So please don't confuse those two things. Again, I'm, I'm really trying to keep my language clear here. <laughs> Part of the reason why this raid was easier is because of resistance mods. Before Beyond Light, resist mods were in the same slot as stat mods, and it got better as you equipped more. Most people would run the raid with high defense on day one because you needed all the help that you can get. In this year's day one raid race, the resist mods were different. Not only did Bungie remove resist mods from the stat mod slot, they consolidated all of them into a single one energy cost mod that goes into your chest armor, which provides the bonus of having five resist mods prior to Beyond Light. Not to mention, you could have two of these equipped at once. Speaking of mods, we didn't have Charged with Light or Warmind Cell mods last year, which in the grand scheme of the game, are immensely powerful in a multitude of ways, from clearing out all enemies in a 40 meter radius, to giving you huge defensive boosts, to stunning everything in a huge radius. This is the strongest we've ever been for a day one experience in terms of gear and build potential, which I'm sure contributed to it feeling a bit easier than usual. And I think all of these potential resistances and powers were not taken as seriously by Bungie. Or maybe they were, and Bungie just doesn't mind. Swords are another reason, they're absolutely insane, and I think there's a very good reason as to why Tanix has a you can't sword me barrier around it. Divinity is another reason if you had that. We didn't have a giant non-moving crit spot to shoot at in the previous two raids, although Divinity was much more of a factor on Tanix than any other part in the raid. Time and ability to prepare was also much higher than past raids. Crown gave you six hours to prepare, six hours hours. While that was a fun little experiment and while I enjoyed the scrappy nature of it, uh, this is completely unreasonable for 99.9% .9 of the community. 
Garden gave a bit more time, three to four days, and also had the raid on Saturday. But Deepstone Crypt gave us the most amount of time thus far to gear, and hitting the cap was also a bit easier because of core activities giving you powerfuls for quote unquote free. Also, we're in a pandemic. No one's going anywhere. You got a lot more time to play video games. As a result, you could prepare way more loadouts to go into the raid and are able to adapt on the fly. You didn't have to stick with just one loadout. I personally like the fact that in early day one experiences, you just had to go into the raid with whatever garbage you found on the floor wrapped in duct tape and had to make the best of it. Most others did not. And as a result, I don't think we'll ever see that ever again. Do I think the player base as a whole has gotten better as well? Sure, we've come a long way since VOG. But if I were to place all of these reasons into a pie chart, increased player skill would not be this 80% chunk of the pie like I feel like some people are perpetuating. It is not the single deciding factor, nor do I think it is the largest factor, but it is a factor nonetheless. Again, I think that if Atrax wasn't the way that it ended up being, you would have had thousands upon thousands more clear the raid than we ended up having on the first day. That's not a bad thing. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Take all the emblems you want. I want more people participating. I want more people clearing this. I say it every single year. I always tell people to do the raid blind. Do the raid day one. It's the best experience in the game. Period. Bar none. There were many factors that contributed to how many people participated and succeeded in the 24-hour emblem chase. Those reasons being more people working from home, more time to play, more time to level up and prepare, more weapon loadouts available, better mod options, and easier than usual moment-to-moment -moment combat situations. Given the feedback from the general population, I would anticipate that Bungie will keep this pace going forward. A week and a half to level up, and the raid being on a Saturday, which again, I think is a good thing. Everyone, every single person watching this video should get to experience the day one raid race, even if it's only once, because it's one of the only times in Destiny where you really got to test yourself, really got to give it everything you got, and it's one of the few times that you get to be a part of this global awesome event. Do I think Bungie's going to do anything about combat difficulty? Eh, no. This has been an issue in my eyes for the past year and a half. I don't think it's any sort of priority for them at all, and I'm sure they would prefer the raids to be easier if it means that they're more accessible. But after our third contest mode raid, I would again like to encourage Bungie to have contest mode be a selectable option in addition to normal mode or bring back difficulty modes for the raids to some degree. The reason I would like to see contest mode specifically as a selectable difficulty option is for the people who are not able to clear it on day one, but who would still like to prove that they can do it. Give them a different color emblem to show that they beat it. Let people have some level of glory for beating it, even if it wasn't on the first day. Then you can also give those who are looking for a bit more of a challenge the option to take said challenge. Throw in some more spoils of conquest to people who want to clear it on contest. Throw them an extra item or two during the raid, whatever. I don't really see why this would be an issue whatsoever. People who wanna do the normal mode, go do the normal mode, enjoy the normal mode. People who want that extra challenge and maybe one extra piece of loot, you can do the challenge variant. That's it. I don't feel like that's asking for much. Maybe it is, and I'm being unreasonable. I just don't think it is. I don't think it's that much. Anyway, that's my take on raid difficulty right now. I know it's a pretty hot button issue, given some recent events. I know very few people are gonna like this take, but I would not be true to myself and how I felt about the raids right now if I just said that I think everything's fine with raiding because I don't think it is, but I don't see Bungie doing much about it. So I don't think you need to really worry too much. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on Reddit, everybody. Woo!